So this is uh, what we call Spring architecture. If you see here on a higher level, it is Spring framework runtime and which contains different modules in it. So here, all these modules pertain to data access and integration and all these modules pertain to web, MVC and remoting and this is AOP aspects and instrumentation and the core container of Spring Framework consists of these modules. They are beans, then core, then context and expression language. So in our first example, we'll be dealing with these three modules. One is beans, second one is core, the third one is context. Please do remember, we will come back when we develop our first Spring application. All these are modules. And the test is the module which uh, which corresponds to that JUnit as, a, sorry, unit testing and integration testing enabler. Okay? So here, let us go one by one. JDBC stands for Java Database Connectivity, which enables a Java application to talk to underlying relational database management system. So basically JDBC provides an API to talk to any RTBMS. ORM as we discussed earlier, it stands for Object Relational Mapping. Basically, we map our POJOs with relations in relational database management system. A relation is nothing but a table. So after the mapping is done, so being from Java application, we will not be talking to database directly, rather we will be talking to POJOs. They know how to talk to the underlying table. That is what ORM all about. Then OXM, as we discussed, object to XML, sorry, we did not discuss it, okay? Uh, we discussed about JXM but not OXM. OXM stands for Object to XML Mapping. So it has two phases. One is marshalling and another is unmarshalling. Marshalling means it will convert up an object, so an XML to object, XML document to an object representation and unmarshalling means an object representation to a XML. So this is with respect to that. And uh, JMS stands for Java Messaging Service as we have already discussed. So it, it has two, two kind of messaging. One is synchronous and asynchronous. So for example, in order to understand what is this synchronous and asynchronous is, when you uh, dial to a number and the opponent, uh, sorry, the destination, if they attend your call, and when you start speaking, that is synchronous communication. When you leave a message, a text message, that it reaches the destination and it can be read by the uh, destination at any point of time. Not exactly the time when it, it is received by the destination. Okay, so that is what we call asynchronous. So those two kinds of messaging will be available using JMS. Transactions. What is a transaction? A transaction, for example, if you are aware, mostly you will be aware of ATMs. So when you insert your debit card, it will be asking your PIN. After you enter your PIN, it will be asking for you, uh, what kind of activity that you would like to perform. For example, I want to withdraw some money, so I have selected withdraw operation. So it will ask for enter the amount, then you will be providing the required amount. That means that figure you will type. Then it will say, I'm processing, please be here to collect your money. So what, what is this? This is a transaction. This is a transaction. Okay, so transaction is nothing but basically in terms of RDBMS, it has to follow AC rules. Atomicity, consistency, integrity as well as durability. Okay, so it has to satisfy all these in order to 
fulfill a transaction. So, transaction management is altogether a separate topic and which is given in the form of a module with respect to Spring Framework. Next, so all these stuff, all these modules will belong to a layer called Data Access or Integration. Next, Web Layer contains Spring Web, Spring Support with Servlets and Spring Support to Portlets and Spring Support or Integration with Struts. Okay, for example, if I have a project which is already developed in Struts and which you want to integrate it with Spring that we call as Spring Web. So Spring Web module is correspond to that. And we have a concept called Spring MVC where we use servlets. So that is what we call an, a web application developed using Spring is because of Spring MVC only. Okay, and the portlets is a technology where it is nothing but, for example, if you open a browser and it, ha it, it has an application corresponds to an entire organization where you want to monitor what is happening with each uh, department in that organization. So there might be different applications that developed for each department, but you want to see all of them or you want to see some of them. It has to be configurable and it has to be in one place. So then what you can do is you can go for portlet development. So portlet development, what happens in the single page, there would be n number of portlets which are configurable and each portlet can be of a different application. That means the backend or the backend application could be a different application. So that kind of uh, what we call pluggability is also there with Spring with portlet integration. So usually uh, the famous uh, portlet engine is JBus Lifery. Next, uh, this is about web layer and AOP stands for aspect oriented programming and uh, aspects instrumentation AOP. All these are, we talk about this when we talk about AOP more. Okay, so the only thing that we need to understand about this is it deals with the aspects or cross cutting concerns or boilerplate concerns. Next, core container. So this is core of your Spring Framework and it is the combination of four modules. What are they? Spring Core, so uh, Spring Beams, Spring Context and Spring Expression Language. We call it as Spring EL. So if some of you uh, aware of JSP's Expression Language, then you will feel at home when we talk about Spring Expression Language. If not also, no problem, it will be covering in depth. Then this test module corresponds to, as I said, unit testing as well as integration testing capabilities are available through this test module of your Spring Framework. So basically the thing that you need to understand Spring as a framework contains n number of modules based on our requirement we will be configuring those modules to leverage the capabilities provided by the respective modules okay so that is what we need to understand uh, Puneet says JPA is also part of ORM right yes correctly uh, yes, correct Puneet. JPA stands for Java Persistence APA. When we talk about persistence, it, uh, it is part of data access. You are correct. So this is a high, high level diagram which contains n number of other things also. So in internally your ORM or your JDBC or OXM, it, sorry, ORM uses JPA internally for persistence.
Okay, Puneet says, RJP is also part of ORM, right? Yes, it is part of OR, ORM only because ORM internally uses JPA for persistence. Next. Yep. So here uh, it is talking about the same stuff. So what we covered in that slide. So I am skipping this slide. This is again same web servlet strut portlet. Yeah. So here we can spend some time on talking about aspects and instrumentation because we did not talk about this while talking spring architecture. So here aspect, this module helps to integrate with aspect J. Aspect J is another AOP framework. Spring has its own AOP framework and Aspect J is other framework which has AOP capabilities. So we can integrate Aspect J along with Spring framework. <coughs> Excuse me. Then instrumentation. So Aspect J uh, usually it, it is annotation driven. So mostly you have to deal with uh, AOP in terms of annotation when we talk about aspect J. Instrumentation. Instrumentation is the ability to monitor the level of product's performance to diagnose the errors and write the trace information. It is kind of profiling thing so that we can achieve using instrumentation. This testing part we have already covered. Next, uh, yeah. Spring Framework Core Layer, as I have already covered, it contains these four modules and the core. See here, core module, it has dependency injection and IOC features. So these two are the concepts that we are going to cover. So dependency injection and IOC, we will cover it through an example so that it will be very clear. I have already covered it using a loose coupling example that is our user and car example but we will cover with more decent examples. Beans, it implements that means this module implements bean factory through factory pattern. So it contains a bean factory interface which is one of the IOC container offered by Spring and the context is a module used for application context. So there are two, contain, two IOC containers are available through Spring framework. They are bean factory and application context. So why we use them? So basically these two consume some configuration files like XML and by using the instance of any of these, we can get the beans configured in the configuration file. What does it do? It go through that configuration file, it identifies the beans and it identifies the dependencies, it creates all beans and it injects the dependencies when needed and when you say that boss get a bean with this ID, it will give the bean created with all its dependencies injected. So that is what the beauty of IOC. Next, so expression language used for querying and manipulating objects at runtime. So for example, when you have a view component, that is for example, you have a JSP page in which you want to uh, fetch the value of a bean, then you can do that using the expression language. Yeah, again, uh, we have this object coupling problem here. So here, not possible to incorporate the changes without refactoring the code. So for example, if I want to change the implementation of car, or if I want to change user objects implementation, so that is tightly coupled. It cannot be scalable or testable in isolation or even maintainable without some degree of code change. 
So this is what we call maintainability issue because they tightly coupled and while testing, while writing unit tests also, you need to have object of objects of dependent uh, what we call beans. So instead, instead, if it is what we call dependency injection, so you will be having interfaces for which you can use mocked objects, mock objects. What I mean by mock object? It is nothing but a dummy object and uh, on which you can say that if you call this method on me, then I will re return this. So there are different frameworks in the market like easy mock and mockito which enables object mocking. So when we use dependency injection and IOC, so your code will be without dependencies. So there when you have the dependent object, objects are injected through dependency injection, but the, as the logic of creation of the objects is not associated with your business logic, it is very easy to write unit test cases. It is very easy to write unit test cases. So which improves what we call stable product because of you can write unit test cases for all your classes and methods.